I just thought I'd pop in here. Um, it's been a crazy week for me. So, uh, you know, with uh, the artist Russell Chatham passing, it kind of threw off my uh, blog schedule because what I often talk about on Tuesdays here is a little bit more in depth about what I'm going to talk about. So my schedule for all that got messed up. So I thought today what I would try and do is um, I get a lot of questions and I thought I would just answer a couple of those questions. But also if, if any folks have some questions just about anything, I would love to answer them. This can be um, you know, on materials, on you know, how I fix the oil pastel, and this is oil pastel, how I fix that on my, uh, on my work, um, how, uh, you know, how to choose a gallery, how to, you know, marketing your work, making your work, deciding what kind of direction you want to go with your work. Any of that is um, fair game here. Carrie, hi, nice to see you here. Um, so, so listen, so here's, here's, here's one of the biggest challenges uh, I get a lot. And this is something that I've struggled with totally, totally, totally. And let me just find it. What it, the question was, um, this comes from uh, Hema, um, but she says, I have a billion things I want to do, what to choose, which path. I often wish I had a giant factory space where I could have many people working for me and I can direct multiple projects. So here's the thing, when we um, are, we are limitless with our creativity and our brains actually, you know, um, if you have a picture you're working on and it's in front of you and you have um, 20, you know, you put out five pictures, you can work on all of them simultaneously. I mean, it's easy to like look at one for 20 minutes and look at the next one. That is 20 minutes you can go and look at multiple pictures you can develop paintings develop your art in a group very easily it's not hard your brain for some reason you think it would be harder like you know riding five bicycles at the same time but our brain actually enjoys that it, you can handle that so it makes sense that when you start thinking about your art you want to do that you you start realizing, oh my, I could do this, and I could do that, and I could do this. And this is just naturally what happens. I have this totally. Um, hey, Francine. Um, I have this totally also. But here's the problem. <laughs> um, you can overwhelm yourself. You And I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but you can have so many things you want to do that you go into your studio and you, you, you can't even begin something because there's just so much stuff you want to do. And it's like, ah, I got to get going on this and, and I want to get going on that. And, and uh, you know, I only have an hour and I'll try this and I'll try that. And you never get, to, you're just like, you're overstimulated, you know? Um, hey, Martha, nice to see you here, Laura. Um, and so, uh, so here's the thing that the actual, much better to, take a little bit of chunk of time. So this is the answer to the, the question of, I have a billion things to do, which do I choose? It doesn't really matter which one you choose, okay? The, the remedy is to just take one and, and then go a little deeper with that one thing. It doesn't mean you're gonna preclude all the other cool things you get to do or the other directions in your work, but there's almost like, instead of going broadly on a whole bunch of things very very shallowly to just choose one for a period of time just say i'm going to just take this one direction i love my landscape watercolors i'm not going to assign my the label to myself that i'm now a watercolor artist but i'm going to look at this for just a patch of time for the next three or four weeks i'm going to just do this kind of work and what happens is that, and it calms you down, first of all, but it allows you to go deeper. It allows you to just start mining the depth of something and it gets really satisfying. And it, it, brought, it deepens it and it makes what, you, what comes out of that experience is more potent, it's more powerful. Um, hey, Margot from Cape Town. Um, 
Sharon, uh, <laughs> she says, I get inertia when overwhelmed. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of energy you can get from just, um, like I'm in this state right now. I'm really excited about next year and all the things we're going to be doing, you know, not just in my art making, but in my teaching. And, you know, I, I'm really excited. And, um, and it, can, it can overwhelm you and keep you up at night. But there's also like that good energy. But here's the thing. When you bring in the goalposts of your ideas, you know, instead of like a huge, you know, I can do all these different things. And when you narrow it down a little bit and, and you're looking more in a target, it's almost like it gives you more possibilities. So it's weird. It's like if you say, you know, like I'm right now, I'm working, I use oil paint and I'm using oil pastel and oil sticks um, in my art. And I would love, I've, I've figured out a way to use collage um, to glue on um, collage. But I'm kind of not doing that yet because I'm still mining this stuff. And I don't want to like, I know that I can get the work I'm doing now. I can get stronger if I just stay on it for a while. Does that make sense? Um, so that's, hey, Debra. Um, so that's that's kind of cool to know, right? It's like, Focus on one thing, you know, just try it for just a little while. And what happens as a result of that, in that one thing is a ton more stuff. And so you go down that rabbit hole a little bit and that opens up more avenues. And it's like, that's going to provide you depth. And that actually clarifies for you because you make headway with that one thing. Then that becomes like you focus on that, and that becomes the thing that you're working on, and opportunities arise out of that that then let you go even deeper with it. And suddenly, the sort of question about, oh my God, all the things I could do, it's like, well, gosh, this is like really opening up for me. This is really exciting, and your tension's drawn back into it. And that's what sort of hones the direction, that's what gives you your signature work to your look, to your look. Um, you know, people talk about style a lot and all that. That's just created by you focusing a little bit for a little bit of time. That just comes out of it. A beginner or someone who's still learning and is, is jumping around, trying a bunch of different things, which is totally fine to do, but that's what creates the, like, it's just a reflection of the artist's, oh my God, there's so many things you do. You know, there's, I was just looking at an artist's work in our building because we have open studios coming and she was saying, oh my God, I feel like there's so many different looks to my work, you know, and, and I want to have this open studio and I want to like sell work, but you know, she had a critique and um, from, from some gallerists who were in there and they said, you know, you've got a lot of different things going. And so my question was here to, yeah, this is cool, but what do you love here? What, what is calling to you? And she pointed to one thing, these landscape grass paintings. And I said, well, double down on that. Just go there. You know, you can do all this other stuff, but just go to where the energy is for you for a little bit. It doesn't preclude you from going back to stuff. So, um, yeah. So yeah, Deborah, exactly. Um, dig deeper. It, totally. Um, yeah. So anyway, before you guys got on, I was saying that, um, I'm happy to answer any questions. This was just sort of an impromptu thing. Um, I've got a couple questions I'm going to answer here, but if you guys have any questions on materials, uh, any questions about marketing, any questions about um, you know strategies, whatever, um, type them in there, and uh, and I'll try and hit them. But um, what I'm what I'm answering right now is the is the challenge people have with having a million different ideas, many different directions, don't know which. You know, that's, that's kind of an important transition for people to make. And, and, you know, when we're starting, when we're beginning, there should be a whole myriad of choices. There should be a whole bunch of stuff that's exciting to you. But it doesn't happen just naturally, necessarily, uh, that your work starts taking on, it gets a little more, more clear. It comes from making a decision um about like just choosing something for a little bit for a little bit of time lock you into anything and and that will give you um clarity and that work will develop and open up new things for you you know in business um 
there's it's important in business the same the same thing like it's messaging you know our art is messaging to people and we're putting something out there and what i'm talking about is getting your message stronger i mean literally you're it's like putting out this thing into the world and if you want to sell it or create impact with that um that message wants to be stronger and so the strength comes from the time you spend looking at it and working on it and doing a second one, doing a third one, all kind of in the same genre, the same message. You know, in business, this is the idea here in business is getting known for something that you're, that, that you're good at or just getting known for one thing. You know, like I, if I wanted to do realistic uh, sailboat paintings, I probably wouldn't advertise them as abstract. And I do large abstract kind of nature-based colorful paintings. That's what I'm known for right now. And I'm known for one thing. And that, that gives people, they can understand that your audience can get behind that. They can refer you. Well, I know, you know, so if they meet someone in the street and they say, oh, I'm looking for some paintings. I want some abstract work. They'll think, who does abstract work, you know, big abstract paintings? Oh, Nick does large abstract paintings, and they'll send that to that person. But if I'm doing realistic water boat, water paintings, abstract paintings, uh, you know, a bunch of different things, the messaging is not so clear. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but that, that's, that's really important to, to get. Um, so, uh, okay, so there's a couple of questions in here. Um, Okay, so Ellie's saying, what's the best online place to sell work? Um, okay, so what I would do is you got to evaluate it, right? You look at the work, look at, you know, look at the, or like Saatchi, for example. I'm always asking people, I always, like, I don't have my work on Saatchi, but I hear some moderate stories. This is my take on Saatchi, and it's based on doing homework. I call up artists' work that's like mine, and I ask them, how's it going on Saatchi? And what I invariably get is like they've sold maybe something. It's not like super robust. So I don't know, you know, like the jury's still out on that, right? But here's my, so, but what i doing is people who sell their work on like uh, store, store fronts, like Crate and Barrel Hall is an original art platform. Um, and they include you in their catalog. And I've known people who've done really well with that, you know? Um, so that's like better. But for you, to the online place, you want to lo look and talk to people. Same thing with a gallery. If you are looking at a gallery, first you want to make sure that your work will fit into it, meaning that it's something that's different that they don't already offer, but there's an aesthetic that you like, you know, with like a gallery, it's the same thing. But you then want to talk to the people that are selling their work there and ask for their experience to see if it's a good fit. So there's no one best online place. It is based on your work and what you're trying to do and what and how you're trying to sell it and all the rest. So artists are incredibly kind and, and generous. So give them a call. Type it, you know, look up two or three people, say you're considering doing this and ask. That's the only way, way to do that. Um, Augusta is saying, um, do you use liquid as a coat on your whole painting in between work sessions on an oil? And if you do, are there any drying problems later on like cracks? Okay, good uh, material question. So I, I do use liquid. Um, I mix liquid in with the oil paint, and I also use Gamsol, which is an odorless mineral spirit. I use a um, the thin liquid. It's the um, God. Let me just look at it. It's uh, um, it's it's the thin one. It's not the thick one. It's I forget the name of it, but it's a thinner version. It's 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 not as thick. So um, I use that, and I use Gamsol, and I mix that, and I use that as my painting medium. And sometimes what I'll do is I will take the the medium. And I will cover the whole painting. And I usually do that if I've got a lot of oil pastels on there or and I want to kind of hold it in place. Like this painting behind me right now, like that's not coming off because I covered this thing with liquid and it's pretty shiny. You can see that. Um, if I scrape my finger on it, I'm definitely scratching up the oil pastel. I mean, oil pastel um, and, uh, you know, the Sennelier oil pastels that we sell those on our website, but you can get those in the store. That brand 
uh, really good, but there's no drying medium in there. They don't dry. They need to have a drying medium added like, um, a, like a liquid. So this painting behind me later today, I'm gonna be painting on this. I just stuck this up here because it was colorful, but that's all covered in liquid. And that's why I would use it. And then at the end of my painting, yes, I'll cover the whole thing with liquid, seal it, and then I use cold wax on it um, to diminish the shine. I coat it with cold wax and then polish it. And so it gives it a really nice, like, pearly kind of, like, polished stone finish. Okay. Um, that's right, Penny. Thank you. Fine detail. Liquid, fine detail. It's funny, you know, liquid that they don't often sell that one as common as the other one, but it's liquid fine detail. So I just order it online. Um, uh, so Chad is asking any best way to hang a cut canvas for painting. Um, so I think you mean like how to hang it when you're painting on it. Um, so you can, I don't do that. What I do is I kind of temporarily, and this is a canvas, this is canvas. This is wrapped on a, on a, on a board. So I have these nails in my studio so I can move my panels up and down and they hang there. So that's how I work on a canvas. I just pin it and, or staple it temporarily on a hardwood panel and then I lift it up and move it around. So it's just like a regular painting on a panel. But then when I'm done, I take that canvas off and I roll it up and I'll send it to a gallery or I'll just get it stretched on canvas, on stretcher bars. Now, because my studio wall has nails on it, I can't just like pin the canvas on. And this is about my trouble with doing that. If I pin the canvas on the wall and paint on it, and I draw a rectangle, okay, this is where the painting's going, I, it's hard for me to not go outside those lines. And once I start painting beyond where the canvas is gonna be, it starts impacting the design of the picture. So, I don't know if that makes sense. I don't have an edge to it. Like on this painting, I know that that's the edge right there. But if I was just canvas on the wall, then I'm worrying about the edge and I always paint over it. And then the painting starts looking better, bigger, and then I've run out of canvas to stretch it. So I don't know if that, if that makes sense. But people, you know, just pinning them on the wall, uh, that's really great. But for me, I'm gonna need as five or six inches extra all the way around to then stretch on the canvas bars. Does that make sense? But I then I end up painting on that and then it it doesn't look good when I trim it. I don't know. So that's that's what um that's what I've had trouble with. So um yeah so uh Sandy's saying yes there comes a point when the play stops and the work begins. Absolutely. Um hey Judy nice to see you here. Okay so yeah so again if any questions you guys I'm happy to answer them but I had a couple of ones here um okay uh so patty's saying um and this has to do with selling i am too i too am afraid of failure and hesitant in selling because i wonder if someone would pay to own what i just completed this makes it hard to stop painting and leads to overworking a painting so you know god this is here's the thing you know um and I was just talking uh, to someone about this this morning, actually. Our art is, is ourselves. <laughs> We're making our work, and it's a representation of ourselves. And for beginners, anybody, you know, it's like standing on stage. It's scary to do this, to put yourself, to try to make something and have people evaluate it because they're going to see this. And that's challenging. And that's a step. That's a step that it's hard for a lot. I mean, I deal with this in my workshops, you know, getting people over that fear of like, hey, this isn't you. Just play with this and put your work on this canvas. So that's a step. And then you get used to that and you're comfortable in that. And, you know, your friends and family like what you're doing and you maybe even get a studio. But there's this next step where you're putting it out in the world even more. And this is another step. Uh, towards showing yourself more to the world and being okay with that. You know, doing a Facebook Live like this is another step. This was a big deal for me to like feel comfortable, like I'm actually have something to say to people and some people might be interested, like this is a thing. And so there's just all these little steps. And for, so for those of you, there's that step of 
deciding to sell your work, that's a big one. And, but it is so rewarding. It's so satisfying to basically put your work out there and offer it, offer that as a connection point really can get behind what you're making. Like it's the ultimate in connection. When somebody approaches you and they want to buy your work, they're basically saying, I just love what you're doing so much. And this, and I want to own this. Like that, and that's why artists will like give their work away because it feels so good when somebody does that. You're like, you don't even have to buy it here. Just for, just for asking, I'm going to give it to you, right? You know, and so that's why it's hard for artists to price their work and say, well, you know, it's this much money and here you go. You know, it's hard, it's hard to do that. It just feels so great because if you're like me, you know, your work, your best work is going to feel a lot like you. It is you. And so it becomes tricky to sell it. But for many people, and, you know, I'm thinking of my friend Tom, who he said to me, you know, a year ago, he's like, Nick, I want to work with you. And I, I don't care about ever selling my work. I just want to make art and I want to learn how to do this. And he came to workshops and he's really, he, but he kept saying, you know, he's got some resources and everything. He's like, I don't need to ever sell anything. I don't care about that. And it's so, it's been so interesting. Better. And someone actually commissioned him and uh, to do something, and he was kind of blown away. And now he's wanting to sell his work because it's a great place to put your work. It's just to like instead of having it pile up in a closet. But you know that's giving him. It's it feels so good. And I don't know if you guys can relate to that. Let me know in the comments if it, how that feels for you when someone does buy your work. It, you can be having the worst day. And when someone buys something, you know, even hints that they're going to buy it, it just makes you feel so great. I love selling my work. I, I think it's just the best thing. And I, and I, you know, I miss my work and I, especially the ones I really like, but it's like children that go off to college, you know, it's like, you know, it's kind of hard, but it's kind of great too. It's like the best possible out end point outcome, but it's a little hard at the same time to let go of those things. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, so here's another question from Shannon. Um, can you put acrylic paint over that liquid layer over the pastel? Um, not so good, no. So acrylic doesn't stick to anything that's oily or shiny, and these are oil pastels. So not so good um, for uh, putting acrylic on top of them. You can kind of get away with it if you use gloss medium, but if it's really thick like this, then no, it's, it, it, it peels off, you know, it's like acrylic, you can't, you can't do that. Small little amounts, you can, um, but it's a little unstable, but you have to have a majority of the paint, you know, the acrylic has to attach to something. So, um, hey Jan, nice to see you here. Um, uh, Aaron saying, will you film live today's painting session? Yeah, I probably, I probably will. Yeah, I like to do that sometimes. Um, you know, what I like to do is, and that was really a big, you know, talk about um, vulnerability and putting yourself out there. You know, it's taken me a while to just feel like, you know, I'm just going to film whatever happens. I might wreck this painting today. It might work out and just get over it, you know, just get over yourself and just, just remember that it, it's helpful for people and you do learn a lot. I mean, what you get for putting your work out there, you get so much help with it because Sure, someone might, you might get some rejection, but invariably someone uh, says a comment or something that can be really helpful for you, you know, and um, for me, putting stuff out there, uh, boy, you know, it's, it's created a whole new part of my life. Like my teaching thing is really huge. And that just, there were small steps. I remember the first workshop I ever did, it was just, I was just, it was just a hunch, you know, I just, I was so tired of working by myself and I love being around people. And I thought, well, this is good. I, at least I can be around with some people and uh, try and teach them some art. And that was super scary to create, to do that first workshop. And, you know, only six people showed up and, um, but I did it and it was, it just started this whole snowball of, of, you know, I love teaching people because a lot of times I'm by myself, you know? So, um, yeah, so this is, this is, you, and we all know this, you know, this, where it feels where it's challenging to make a move towards something that's a little like, there's uncertainty. See, here's the 
anything that feels uncertain uh, that we haven't done before, um, painting larger, um, you know, we're looking at, seriously, we're looking at possibly doing a live art to life event where inviting a few hundred people to come to a thing. This is a big deal. Like, and it's scary. Like, oh my God. Now I can teach 40 people in a room. I, I don't even need to like prepare, you know, but this is like different and this is bigger. And I don't know about, you know, anything like that, that you're not sure of the outcome, you're naturally afraid of. And your, your body, your, your amygdala, you know, like the part of the brain that tells you to just run comes up whether there's real danger or perceived danger. So their natural inclination is to not do it. And we have to override that to, because all learning and art is just the practice of trying new things constantly, you know. So my advice on that is to just make your steps small. If you've never sold anything before and that terrifies you, just put up some work in your house when you have a party and let's see people respond to it. Or if someone wants a painting, you know, uh, offer it to them, you know, or do like one commission or, you know, do a trade with someone. Anything that gets you in the habit or gets you close to offering your work for something else, you know, even a trade, you know, like, hey, I'll, I'll, if you like that painting, I'd love to give it to you, but maybe you could do this for me, or maybe, you know, so it's just small steps. We're all making small steps to whatever that goal is, the desire, we're growing into it. We're not just like rushing into it. Um, okay. Uh, Augusta saying, someone just bought a painting of mine today. She saw it in a show last year and saw another painting of mine in another place and remembered the painting she wanted and called and I still had it. How great that she was touched enough by my art that she thought to buy it a year later. And that's just a perfect example, Augusta. Like that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like you just put stuff out there. You didn't know that if you did another show, you might sell paintings from a show a year ago. Like you can't predict these outcomes, but you don't know, you don't get to know them ahead of time, right? You don't, there's no guarantees. It's all uncertainty. We just got to get really, really comfortable with uncertainty. And it's such a, you know, and that's what art is. It's learning how to be uncertain and to follow our intuition. And this is what creates all the cool stuff in our lives. This is all about wonder and mystery and this synchronistic thing that just happened to you, Augusta. Like, how cool is that, right? You know, like if, if you talk to someone today, Augusta, and, and they were saying, you know, I did a show last year. I hardly sold anything. I don't want to do another one. I felt like I was a waste of time. You would probably say, you know what? Actually, no, you know, you'd be surprised. It reminds people again, like that you're still in this game. And I sold the painting today um, from a year ago. And how, how cool is that? So that's, that's absolutely, that's totally relevant to this. Um, yeah, totally. Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, so Anne's asking, are you going to cover the pastels with oil paint or is it finished? Yeah. So this is just um, behind me. I just, you know, I am do this a lot now. I'm really in my own work. I'm trying to be as crazy and as bold as possible. Like, I'm just going to use all these colors and all this stuff. And then today I'm going to work on this and I'm going to reduce this down. I'm, I'm looking behind me at this picture and I'm looking for color combinations and parts of this picture that I really like, um, you know, and some colors that are kind of different. And then I will go more in that direction, right? So this is this is like exploring a whole bunch of stuff, all these colors, but I'm gonna reduce this down. This is a little, it's a little raw for me right now, you know, but it's powerful and I wanna have like something to react to, you know, like having a strong reaction to something makes it easier to know what to do. So I like to set myself up with that in an experiment and I teach this in workshops, you know, when you start, be super bold with it, go for it. And that's where you can play and experiment the more kind of response you can get from that initial stage gives you more information and then you can just totally um, discover things and then refine things. So yeah, I'll definitely be putting oil on this and probably oil pastel on top of that and I just layer stuff and who knows, I'll probably scrape down to this layer, dig up some of this stuff a little later. So yeah, that's, that's exactly what I do. Um, 
Sean saying, oh, sorry, I missed what you said. Uh, so this is, this is an underpainting. Yeah, so this is an underpainting. So, but I, you know, I just paint really thick and really bold. This is all paint underneath this. Um, there's oil paint underneath this, but then I, like, this is paint right here. That's paint. But this is oil pastel. This is oil pastel pastel on this and now i'm going to paint that diane's saying uh so hard to sell when my area loves fruit and not so much into abstract but i'm trying to get my work out there have made a few sales yeah you know and this is this is a great point and something that um i struggled with you know i, I used to do illustration and i got really comfortable with thinking about the whole United States as my market. You know, I live in a pretty, you know, I live in the Bay Area, but it wasn't a lot of uh, uh, market for the kind of work I did. It was more based out of New York City. So broaden your scope out there, you know, uh, your perspective of, of who can buy your work. Really start thinking about the whole United States. It, the most important thing that you want to plan is to make the work strong. If you make the work strong, you can sell it from anywhere. Don't feel limited, you know, by just your geographical area. And once more, if you do offer something that's really different in your area, that's gonna really stand out. If everyone's painting barns in the snow and you're the person who is painting abstractly, you'd be surprised. That's a pretty great um, angle to have locally. But I understand you probably have your clients and you're thinking local. Look towards developing a body of work. If you want to do something different, develop you know nine to twelve paintings, and then look to sell them through another avenue and, and approach that gallery out in the world out there. You know, slightly different thinking. Again, it's bigger thinking, right? Okay, so that's how I would do that. Um, okay, uh, Julie saying I had, I put a piece in an art show. It. it was given a highly commended certificate, which made me feel so good. It didn't sell, but I learned so much by the experience. So Julie's talking about something here that is uh, related to this uncertainty. When we're uncertain, you know, when we're when we don't know about what we're doing with our work and we're trying things, right? It's scary, and and our brain is saying, "Run! Don't do it." If our body, our brain, everything is saying no. But if we can persist and do this, if we can continue this and keep going, we don't have a lot to rely on. So we rely on our intuition. And this is so, so important because our intuition is the voice of our deeper soul. It's like that's that's the star within our within ourselves. And that's what makes the amazing work. I talk so much about at like advanced workshops, you know, really helping people that are far along on this. It's like you got to double down on this intuition thing. You, you got to bring this more into the work, more, more, more. And that's why, um, Julie, that piece got that certificate because the works, it's, it's more different. It's more like you. Every show that I've ever had, there's always been a couple pieces that were so on the edge that I didn't even want to include in the show, but the gallery did anyway. And they're the pieces that, you know, usually they sell, but even if they don't, they're the pieces that I look towards that gets the biggest response. And the pieces that I look towards, that's where my new work, my new body of work is going to start. So yeah, intuition is really great. So congratulations on that. That's, that's, that's really good. Um, you know, that's just an example of you. It's a bid for connection. When you put your, yourself out there, connection comes in stronger. And that's what happened right there. That, that certificate is people saying, we feel something here. That's a huge affirmation for you to do more like that, right? These are, these are, these are signs from the universe for you to go deeper, to double down on who you are and what you're doing. You are correct in going that way. That's just a, like a big affirmation. So that's super. Um, Olivia saying, trying to get the art business going, got a business license, don't know when I'll start selling. Feel like I jumped the gun though. The paintings are piling up in my studio. Um, awesome, Olivia. That's that's super, super great. You know, um, start a little thing each day towards that, um, towards that eventuality. You know, 
if you've got a you know work out there choose a date though you know is it an open studios or are you going to do a little pop-up thing give yourself a date when you're going to have like an open studio and you know you're going to be selling some of your work you need a date in the future and um and talk about it you know and even share with people like i've never done this before you guys like I'm going to do this anyway. I mean, I, I'm terrified, but for the first time ever, I want to share with my friends and families and anyone who reads this post what the work I've been working on. I just started painting a year ago. I'm so into this and I need to start selling some of my work. And I hope that some of you guys can come and check it out. And, and, you know, I'm going to do this. And on September 15th, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, have, I'm going to be open for two days. I would just love to share this with you. You know, like, that's coming from such a good place and it's honest, it's sincere, and it's a small step. So that you just actually got to launch this just a little bit, just, just a little bit. You need that date. Otherwise, it's going to be just, you know, waiting till the work gets better and better, and it's never going to be good enough to sell it. You'll ne you, that's just a, this sort of, we buy ourselves time. It's like, well, when I get better, I'm just, I'm just not that good. As soon as I get my style figured out, I'm going to be able to sell this work. As soon as, you know, this new gallery takes my work, then I can sell it. As soon as, as soon as, it's, you, it's just a postponement because there's uncertainty and your body, your intuition, everything's like, run, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. So little steps, Go for it and let us know how it turns out because it's it's exciting. It will give you so much momentum, seriously, um, to interact and crowdsourcing energy, getting that that spirit, that energy from the rest of the world really can help your practice. Okay, Dolores saying agree on showing up at the same at the same show, Nick. I've been in a Christmas market with my photography printed on large metals for the past three years. This past weekend, four people came to place orders on pieces they saw last year. I was seriously considering not doing the Christmas shows anymore. We're sticking with it. Yeah, it's great. You know, and often it, we give up on stuff because, because we're doing it the wrong way. Like if, if we do a show and we put so much of ourselves into it, which is fine, but if we judge ourselves harshly by the outcome and it's not worth it and I didn't sell anything and I didn't, you know, like, don't think of it that way. Try and think of it about just, it's, it's part of your, it's part of your development. It's like learning. It's like standing there for a day or two, talking about your work, getting feedback. So regardless of what happens, it can give you energy. And listen, I don't do open studios for the, that reason. Like, it's a lot of work and you know it, it, it can be an energy drain but here's what i how i have done them in the past because our building opens up for these um these kind of open studios and i've been with a gallery for a long time and i can't really sell out of my studio and my price points higher than the people that generally that are coming to this event they're looking for kind of like you know reasonably priced things they can buy for christmas presents and stuff so i usually don't do it but one year and what happens is I'm often painting during that week and my doors closed, but the people that come to this event, for some reason, they feel like they can just open studio doors and walk in. So I'm painting, I have my headphones on and I, and I have my mask on in the studio and people just open the door and just walk in. I turn around and there's like six people standing there and, and I, they weren't invited. I wasn't part of this open studios, but they just came in. And because I was painting, they were really interested and um you know i said hi and i didn't throw them out i said i'm just working and so i started doing this i started letting my doors be open during open studios and i just paint i just work while people are coming in and, and you can kind of tell the people that are really interested you can pull aside and say oh yeah here listen grab here's my information any of these you like whatever so I, I, I really, I felt like I was painting mostly, and then there was an opportunity for people to come in, see my work, meet me a little bit, and if they really wanted something, um, they could purchase something, or you know, at least have an email to where, because I got a lot of art consultants come in, you know. So that's another way. Try to think of it as a win outside the sales. So you, so you do exactly what you're saying. You keep going, and you to bring this in as part of your practice. Um, Okay, um, Patty saying, I almost gave up one night for lack of sales, self-doubt. I learned that making the connection made the sale. Yeah. So 
listen, it's what people are buying you guys is your enthusiasm and, and how into it you are. And that's why, like, I don't, I don't really have a huge business course because I know artists fired up about what they're making and, and get their work really strong, but they got to be into it. Like you got to go for this thing. The sales come naturally and they just want, they just want what you're selling because they want your energy. They, you're, you're just like honey and the bees come, you know, it's like, so, but the only thing that you have to do, and this is critical, you've got to be into it. You've got to figure it out. You've got to go dive deeper into your work, whatever it takes to make your work really cool and exciting for yourself. If you don't, then I don't have a business plan for that. I don't know how to, you know, I, I'm not good at selling stuff unless you're really into it. But but it's easy, you know, when when you are. Like I can talk all day about, you know, our programs and the progress we get for people or, or my art, you know, what I'm excited about. Like I'm excited about this painting. I'm a little terrified because, you know, I put this on Instagram and people really liked it. I'm probably going to cover it all up today, you know, but that's the good kind of fear, you know, like it's the, you know, it's like the fear that you get when you're about to jump off a high dive. You know you're going to jump off, but you're a little scared, but you know you're going to do it and it's going to be really fun, but you don't want to do it. That's or natural good kind of fear, okay? That It's not the fear like running away from a bear fear. This is normal imagined fear that does not want to be something that could. Um, okay, so... Good, good, Olivia. Yeah, like, and post that date. Like, post it. Let us know on this call right now. Make a commitment. Let us know when you're going to do it, you know? Um, okay, Sean's saying, um, I'm about to do the wall where I can hang my art, and I keep vacillating between making a wall with nails like yours or using several large wall easel type deals. I really love, um, I'm biased, um, but, you know, so take it with a grain of salt. I put nails, um, you know, screws sticking out about half an inch every 16 inches you know every you know on, the, on put them in the studs all over so i can lift the paintings up above my head i can put two on top of each other i can put paintings all over my wall and i do i move them all around i got let's see i got one two three four five six seven paintings right now hanging up on my studio wall and i'm moving them constantly i want to make it easy for me be working on a painting for half an hour and then put it to the side and put another one there so I really like the nail system so okay um, Patty saying I just stumbled across this live as I was taking a break and wow love what the universe is throwing my way I haven't sold anything yet because I don't know how to price things lots of interest in waiting on me to give prices all right great Patty um, so uh, so here's what you do Patty for, and this is good for anyone you know trying to figure out your pricing You've got to look at what other artists um, who are just starting out are kind of pricing their work at. And I use kind of benchmarks. So I teach workshops and, um, and we work on 12 by 12 panels in the workshops a lot. If those are framed and we sell these little frames, right? 12 by 12. So I know in my head a 12 by 12, what that would sell for. If you're just starting out and you want to sell these, it's around... 300 to 600 dollars on facebook if you've never sold something so if someone wants a price like that's pretty good you know lower than that because you eventually might want to have someone sell your work for you and you need to start have putting some value on your work so other people can sell it and take a percentage of it but you know that's where i would start out and i look at the 24 inch by 24 inch size as a way to benchmark the prices because the prices are all based on about your favorite one or anything like that. It's all based on square inches. So my price lists just are based on size. So if you look at it, if you're looking in galleries and you want to start getting your work out there, a 24 inch by 24 inch painting um, in a gallery in Santa Fe for like sixteen hundred to twenty four hundred dollars that allows the or to, to three thousand that allows the gallery to take half of that money and then give you something and make it worth your while but it, you need to be so that kind of price range is how you gear is how you can kind of work that out and a 24 inch by 24 inch i don't know if that's 144 square inches or no it's more than that it's a lot more than that but you can evaluate based on the square inch, and then you can figure out other prices. But 
you know, starting somewhere, you haven't sold anything, you know, get it, do it, you know, sell it, get it. So if someone buys your work, awesome. Sell one, make more. You know, that's the whole thing with this. It's just kind of like, you want to make it dirt cheap because you want to be, you're doing this seriously. There's a lot of, you know, time and work and it's an original thing. Only one exists in the world. So that's where I would start with that. Um, for any of you who are here, if you want to um, get our color uh, tips download, you can go to art to life color tips. I've got a free download there. I forgot to say that. And I think Ferris will put in the uh, comments a, um, you know, put that link there. But it's a2lcolortips.com. So um, that'll allow you to uh, get that. So let's see. Um, Sean saying, do you ever get stuck midway through a project while you're working on it and, and going back and forth through ideas? Um, as soon as I get stuck, you guys, as soon as I get stuck, I move on to another picture. I don't have as much time as I used to to paint all day. I used to just scratch my head and sit down and stare at it and look at it. I don't have that time. You know, I have a couple hours a day, three hours, because I'm, you know, developing content to teach people. I love teaching. And so I'm doing both of these things and I'm working on a book right now. So I got a lot of stuff I'm doing. So when I get stuck, Sean, what I do is I pick up another painting <laughs> and I that I'm not stuck on because all the while I'm painting, I'm making, and when I'm painting on the other painting, there's in the subconscious, in the back of my mind, it helps me solve the other one, right? So that's what I do. Don't spend a lot of time being stuck or worrying about it. Move on to another one. That's why I really teach people how to work on multiple pictures. The process that I teach is working on five or six things, kind of all as a family, building them up together. Um, Okay, uh, let's see, well, boy, there's a bunch of things. So Pat, uh, so I'm working on a website and posted three paintings I had intended to put on my website today on my Facebook page. They sold in five minutes. My question is when launching a new website, is it okay to put sold paintings on that website? Yeah, sure, sure, Pat. So I'm curious, leave me, a, you know, if you want, what did you sell it for? What was the price point? Was it really low? Was it really high? Um, did you, how did you get the price? Is this the normal price? I mean, that's really great and, you know, so fantastic. But here's the thing, the, when you put, you know, when people come to a website, have a few of them that are sold, but people want to see the work that's available. Remember, everyone's walking around the planet saying, what's in this for me? You know, like, and if a painting's sold, they don't want I mean, there's a little bit of social proof in that, like, this guy sells his work or this woman has sold everything she's ever made. But you just need to show a couple of those and just show what's available, you know. So, um, oh, Susie's saying, the color tips download is great. I have it pinned up on my studio wall. R great. Really good. I spent a lot of time working on that. And, uh, and that's, um, you know, these are the big questions I get with color. So, um, yeah, that's, I'm glad that's helpful. Um, that's helpful. Um, okay, uh, $300 each. Okay, so so this is a great example, Pat. So let's go for a price increase, Pat. Um, you know, your paintings can sit there for a day before they sell. If they sold in five minutes, I kind of had a hunch that this was really low. Raise your prices a little bit. Once your work starts selling like that, even if it took a week and you sold them all, um, we need to start raising the prices. You owe it to those early people that bought your work and it, you owe it to yourself. Like this is part, the pricing is a momentum for you. Charge a little bit more, you know, go a little bit higher on those pricing, but congratulations on that. And that's, by the way, you know, for raising prices, you gotta just sell everything. You gotta just like everything I'm making is selling. So you raise the prices and don't go crazy, you know, S increase your price 10 or 15% do some more work, see where it goes. It's incremental charges, you know. The miracle and the amazing thing you want to create is to have buyers buying your work. You just do that all day long. You can always make more. And then your prices, you can raise your prices a little. And then you can raise your prices again, you know. Um, my my uh, 12 by 12s in full transparency are $1,800 now. I couldn't imagine selling my work for that much. I mean, I can't believe it. A 12 by 12, I mean, Oh my God, that's so much. But it's actually, I'm looking at people that are selling their 12 by 12s much higher than that, you know, and people with, and 
it's like they're paying for your sensibilities and that history of your work and it's gotten better and better and better. And you know, you're only a human being for so long and once you're gone, it's like, you know, Russell Chatham who just passed, um, his work, you, you can't get it anymore, you know? And it's like, whatever people paid, I assure you, you know, it's worth it because that's over. And um, so just remember that, you know, we're, we're in the business of making original work and most things in this world are not that. Most things are overpriced sofas and crappy beds that fall apart and, you know, this is original art and it's, it's about humanity and it's you and, you know, so Pat raised that price a little bit, but that's super, super terrific, fantastic. Um, I'd say you might want to increase by a hundred bucks. Yeah, I kind of agree. Right. Uh, yeah, no, it's really good. It's isn't it so great to sell your work? It's just it's the coolest thing. You know, don't forget, most people in the world, they just want to be you. They want to do this, you know, they feel their creativity too, but they're terrified. They're not gonna go for it. The most they can get to is surrounding themselves with things that make them feel alive. Like we make things that feel alive. Our, our aliveness has driven us to make art and to go for it. A lot of people won't ever do that. And they can buy original art and that can fill their home with things that move them. And they identify with what you're doing. That's what they need this, man. It's like art, the, the art, you can sell so much art. This is what people want. This is why they're buying art. And we got to remember that, that we're the providers of that. And it's a really, it's like a service, you know, like we're the most sensitive people on the planet and most people aren't like us. And we have this opportunity and it's our, is our obligation to share with the world what we make. And, and shift the world and put it out there. And, you know, and so this is, this is the kind of conversation that's so good to have with everyone because it's, there's a price for this, you know, it's rare. So, yeah, so um, anyway, cool. Um, okay, uh, good, I'm glad that was helpful. Uh, hey, Anita, uh, oh, he's like, oh dear, Oli, just come on. So I'm gonna be, I have an average, I'm gonna be here on Tuesdays uh, around noon going to be on here and I kind of just like talking and uh, sharing stuff I usually have a theme that I'm talking about and this is recorded and I usually don't go on this long this is I'm just looking it's so easy to talk geez 52 minutes so um, but you know try to keep it to half an hour and um, but uh, yeah I got I asked a question in a Facebook group um, in the the artists the art to life artists free group asking about what was their biggest challenge I got so many cool questions and I'm looking at them here there's hundreds um, you know, when is, when is the painting done? You know, what do I paint next? Uh, you know, I can't get balance and depth in my work. How to figure out a series. Uh, do you sketch first on the canvas before painting? Or do, you know, all there's so much. And it's really great to talk about this stuff. And then, you know, as a community, everyone can give their input and, and help, we can help each other. So. Listen, you guys, I'm going to hop off. i got to eat lunch. I'm starving. But um, again, if you're uh, new here and you want to uh, get our free download, it's, it's a2lcolortips.com. Um, that will give us your email, and I will include you on our blog. I don't. I, when I talk a lot about stuff, I do a blog on Sundays um, that many of you are there, and it's just great. You know, It's like a QA and a in a way. You know, people are sharing stuff on Sunday in the comments. So hope to see you there. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go and work on this painting behind me. So hope you guys have um, a great week and I will talk to you soon. Okay, thanks.